Here are five lessons that I learned while making my very first million dollars. Now, if this is your first time on the channel, welcome. My name is Bashar Ketu and I'm the founder of BJK University, an education company with a mission to impact one million lives. You see, over the last 12 years or so, I've launched nine businesses, seven of which failed. Um, two or three of those actually did okay and did pretty well actually for a little while, but then ended up failing. Um, and then only the last two have been able to succeed. Now, I've been at this for over 12 years now. So some people look at me today and where I am and then they say, well, Bashar, you know, it's easy for you to say these things, but you gotta understand, it's been over 12 years and over nine businesses that I've launched for me to get to where I am, right? So the very first thing that I learned and I have them written down here is, you need to learn how to ask for advice. What I realized very early on is unless you are Elon Musk trying to fly into space, land the rocket back into Earth, fly it back and forth, then almost anything you're trying to attempt has been accomplished before, right? Someone else has already done it before. And instead of, you know, trying to figure out on your own and think you know it all, piggyback on someone else's success and do understand to kind of, you know, add on to that, you can learn from anybody. And this is very important, I would almost write it down. For a long time, I thought that if I, if you make less than me, then you're gonna learn from me and I cannot learn from you, right? But then what I realized that every single human being has walked a different path and has had a unique experience and we can all learn from each other regardless our age, regardless our orientation and regardless our you know, financial accomplishment. It, it, it is irrelevant because there are things that you know about life or about business or about relationships that I simply haven't experienced and I can learn from you and vice versa. So that's the first thing. The second thing is learning how to work for, with other people. It took me a long time to realize this and understand it and start implementing it. For the longest time, I thought that because I am the CEO, because I'm the founder, because I'm the boss, that every single idea needs to be mine. And if it was almost like if I allowed my team or my employees at the time come up with their own ideas and innovate, then now it's kind of like they are, what's the word? They are entitled and that for some reason they can like come back and take it all away from me and then they're gonna stop appreciating me and think that, you know what, Bashar, um, it's all about me, it's not about you anymore. I got this and I kind of made this happen, it's not you. And I was really afraid of that and I think it was my own personal insecurities, right? But then what I realized is that for you to succeed and grow in life, you need empowered people around you. You want people that are interested in your success as much as you are interested in your own success. And only that will happen is if those people have a sense of ownership in whatever it is you're trying to do. Um, you share common grounds and you share common you know, values and, 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 and you both have an upside in, or you both have an interest in the upside. So that is very important that you surround yourself with the right people and you ask for help and you also make sure that you are able to give and take with other people. The third thing was, um, focusing on the main thing. You see, it's very, very easy for us entrepreneurs to like divert our attention and then jump on the next thing and then try to do the new shiny object, the new NFT, the new stock, the new this, real estate is popping, this thing is popping. My sister Olan made $10,000 on this thing. My brother, you know, uh, made 20,000 on this thing. This must work, well, that must work. And it's so easy to get diluted and to get distracted and kind of jump into the next thing but it is so difficult to stay disciplined and stay focused on one thing. And one thing that I realized over the years, and the reason why, like when you take the last 12 years of my journey and having launched nine businesses, the last seven years of the 12 years, I've spent them doing one thing, which was selling on Amazon, coaching our students how to sell on Amazon. Selling on Amazon, coaching people how to sell on Amazon, and that's it. Literally, that's pretty much it, right? Now I focus a little bit more on BJK University, which is the coaching side and providing opportunity for our team because that's what I'm passionate about. That's where I want to really grow. And that's where I really see most fulfillment and how I can give more back to people, which takes me to actually the next thing. But before I get in there, it's really important that you focus on the main thing and every time a new idea comes at you and a new idea nags you and a new idea is like dragging you and taking you to this spot and taking that spot, you push it off 
And I have an exercise. What I realized after a while is that 80% of the ideas that we think about that come to us are useless. And if we just allow enough time, we will forget that we ever thought of them. So what I do is every time I get a new idea, I simply push it off. If, I, if it comes back, I push it off. If it keeps comes, coming back like two, three weeks later, then maybe and only maybe then I will open a sheet and I will write it down and I will say, what are the pros and what are the cons of me implementing this thing, right? And I'll see where that goes. And then I keep doing that for over the next weeks. And if I see that the pros outweigh the cons, or if I am as interested in the idea as I was when I first thought about it, then maybe only then I will start trying to implement. Otherwise, 80% of the ideas that we think about are useless and are complete trash. And they're nothing but distraction away from the main thing. The fourth thing is, before I go on that, if this is your first time and haven't subscribed, consider subscribing and also smash the thumbs up button because it truly helps us rank in the algorithm. Number four is understanding that it's really important for you to get into a, you know, a business that you realize that you are the bottleneck of, right? And here's what I mean. The reason why your finances are where they're at or your body style is where it's at or your weight is, you know, let's say if you're 180 and you want to go to 150 and you've been trying for the last three years and you haven't been able to, it's only because of your level of awareness and your level of information, right? That's the only thing stopping you from the next level in life is your level of information, right? And so if you want to accomplish the next thing in life, if you want to go into the next thing, you simply need new information. You need more information, right? And well, not necessarily more, but you need new information because sometimes, like right now, I, I try to limit the input into me. I try to limit how many things influence my decision making. I try to implement, uh, 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 limit how many mentors I have, how many books I read, how many different things I listen to, right? Because that's also very important because it goes to the third point, which I was talking about earlier is focus, keeping the main thing, the main thing. But do understand that you are your company's or your efforts only bottleneck. And the way for you to de-bottleneck yourself so that you can keep growing, because if you're not growing, you're dying, right? is new information, is you need more, a higher level of awareness, whether that's from books, whether that's a new mentor, a new, uh, uh, someone consoling you, a mastermind, uh, a new class, a course, whatever it is, you just have to get your, put yourself out there and increase your level of awareness and that's how you can de-bottleneck your growth and then keep growing and going to the next thing. The fifth, and I think the most important, is that the more you give, the more you'll get. And here's what I mean. What I realized over the years is, like right now in BJK University, we don't make decisions based on bottom, bottom line. We don't make decisions based on how much can this improve our revenue, how much can it improve our profit. We look at how much more opportunity can this create our team? How much, how much better results can this get our students, right? Can it deliver better results? Can it provide more opportunity to our team? If yes, then do it. If no, then don't do it. We don't look at how much are we going to spend? How much is it going to make us? And the reason why is I've realized that first, you are more, more fulfilled when you help other people. And number two, when you give more to people, people almost feel obligated to give back to you, to contribute back to you. And so every time I, I focus less, the least, the least I focus on the bank account and on the, the you know, the... The least I focus on the bottom line and how much money I have in the bank and the more I focus on impact and, and adding to people's lives and adding value to their lives and their families and providing them with better lifestyles and better opportunities, the more the bigger, you know, the bigger the bank account grows as a byproduct. Because again, you're giving so much to these people where like the value to like what they, what their sacrifice is, which is if it's a price or if it's time or whatever, is so much greater, the value is so much greater where it's, it's just like, wow, this person just keeps giving to me. I'm almost like, I feel obligated. I have to give back, right? And you have to keep growing. That's one kind of a bonus point is do understand is you should keep growing because if you're not growing, you're dying. And because the more you grow, the more people you can impact, the more people you can help. And that's what it's all about. And maybe you are in a situation where you're like, Bashar, I don't give two shits about other people. I just want to grow myself. And you know what? I was in your situation seven years ago. 
But what I realized after chasing money for a while is that your desire for money will get numb. After you make five, ten thousand dollars a month, you are any whatever all of your money problems are gonna get solved and everything else you're gonna be left with problems that money can't really solve because maybe you're driving a Toyota and you buy a BMW and after the BMW, maybe you buy a Bentley. Maybe you're renting and then you buy and then from buying you buy a bigger house and then what, a bi even a bigger house. Like you're gonna to get to a point where it's like what more? But you need that inside, fulfill that fulfillment deep down that you truly feel really good about yourself. And that only comes from helping other people, from impacting their lives. And I'm not just talking about hand uh, a homeless person $20, which I do, but I'm talking about providing people a lot of opportunities, you know, showing them a way. Maybe you figured something out that other people might be interested in. Maybe you are doing something that could give back to society. And I, I know almost 100% of people watching this video, there are people out there and, 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 and causes out there that you care about, and you only can help these things or you can help them more when you have more, right? So the more you give, the more you'll get, the more you'll get, the more you can give, and it's just a cycle. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, drop in the comments which of the points that I mentioned above really hit you harder. And also, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe and smash that thumbs up button. Outside of that, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.